is a presentation of the Christian Television Network. Join us for a half hour of fun and games at Joy Junction. Now here's Sheriff Don. Hello and welcome to Joy Junction. I hope you're feeling good today and you're in for a good time, nice games and a lot of fun, and also learning something important from the Bible. So let's meet our first two contestants right away. For the blue side, we have... My name is Tara Iceberg. My age is 10. And what grade are you in, Tara? Four. Fourth grade? Uh-huh. Good. Where do you go to school? First flute grade. What do you like to do in your spare time, Tara? Play my flute. How long have you been playing on the flute? One year. Good, good. Do you have a band at your school? Yeah. And you play in that band? Uh-huh. Very good. What's the first subject you have in the morning? Religion. Good. And what have you been studying lately? I forgot. You forgot. Aha. Uh -huh. Don't let your teacher hear that, okay? We'll take that back. Good. We just took it back. All right. And uh, what is your name? Don Gujan. And you're how old? Ten. I'm in fifth grade. I go to first grade. Good, good. How do you like school? It's okay. What's your last subject of the day? English. What time do you get out of school? Three o'clock. And what time does school start in the morning? 8.20. So what, I'm asking you a lot of questions. Huh? <laughs> what time do you have to get up in the morning to get to school by 8.20? Well, I usually get up at 6.30. Do you get up real easy, just pop out of bed and ready to go? No. no. <laughs> There's that honest person, right? Who likes to get up early in the morning? But something we all must do. All right, we're ready for our first contest. Deputy's got it all set up in the street. And while we get them ready, you look and see what nice awards they'll receive today. Each contestant will receive a beautiful full-color T-shirt to remember their exciting visit to Joy Junction. Today's winners will receive a beautiful Joy Junction watch with the letters PGF to remind them that it is always time to put God first. Back to you, Sheriff Don. All right, girls, you're ready. Your partners are seated here and ready to wind in the balloons. You see, the street is full of balloons, red and blue ones, and we want you to break them as your partner turns them up. The one who gets all their balloons broken first will get 20 points. So are we ready? On your mark, get set, begin winding, boys. Here they come. Pull it, turn it. <laughs> Watch the string. Whoop. Watch the string. Oh, there they go. Bring it on. Bring it up. Bring it up. There they go. Come on, bring it up. That's it. Keep them coming. <laughs> Contestants, you could all come right over here and get seated. My, what a mess you made in the street, and what a lot of noise you made. <laughs> all right, very good. We have some more contests coming up. Either team can win. Who do you think it's going to be? Blue team? <laughs> We're going to find out shortly, but right now it's time for Sarah Edens to sing a beautiful song for us. It's called, I Am Adopted. <laughs>
like that. That was neat. You know, I liked it. I'm adopted. How, how many of you all are, are adopted? Why, sure. Every one of us. When we have Christ come into our heart, the Bible tells us we are adopted into the family of God. That's right. You know, Sheriff Don, I was thinking of uh, mentioning that adoption story. Remember a, a, a story about a little four-year-old boy in Mexico. Uh, back in 1984, there was a, an article in the newspaper about this little boy who was very, very badly burned in Mexico City. He was four years old. And uh, he was burned in an explosion that killed some, uh, like, 500 people. Well, probably millions and millions of people saw that little boy's picture in the paper, but everybody kind of forgot about it after a while, except this one lady in New York City. Well, she was so moved by this little boy, she... She wanted to know if there was something that she couldn't do for this little lad. For the next two years, she sent him gifts and went down and visited him in Mexico City. And in fact, she found special doctors to help him. And finally, after two years, she said, you know, I think I want to adopt this little boy. And she did. He faced many, many years of reconstructive plastic surgery where they fixed his face and his hands and everything else. But he had somebody that loved him so much and wanted to give herself to him that he felt very much. He wasn't an orphan anymore. He was now somebody special. You know, that's just like us when God adopts us into his family. When we ask Jesus to come into our heart, we become a, a son or a child of God, and we become adopted and loved by him. It's not just enough for us to be loved by God. He wants us to love other people, and that's the thing that he asks us to do. You know, when God loves us, he doesn't love us because we can do something for Him. He loves us because we're special. You know what? I, I'd encourage everybody out there this morning is to find somebody that, that you can do something nice for. Kind of adopt them as a friend. Not because they can do something good back for you, but just because you love them and want to show Jesus' love for them just like He loves you. Professor, what in the world have you hey, got Jeff over there? Don. <laughs> Jeff Don. Well, good morning, Professor uh, I Clodhopper. I got something here, boy. You got something yeah, there, huh? That. See what that says on there? Glue spray. Glue spray. Yeah. yeah. Well, I've been telling you, I've been watching Pepion here. And he, on his drawing board, you know, yeah. he has pins all over the drawing board. See here? Uh-huh, yeah. Little pin stuck. And if he does anything, he sticks it with pins. Right. He doesn't need to do that anymore. <laughs> he you know, doesn't got, need to do that. No, I got spray. No and spray on there, and and, you, and the paper will stick right to it when he when he shows an example of something up there. Can you, I show you? Yeah, would, would you, you like to see how it works? Hey, well, well yeah, I'm you, always open to something new. You got a piece of, paper, no, yeah, yeah, piece of sure. paper somewhere handy? Piece of paper. Oh, piece here's paper. one. Here's yeah, one. Here's a little piece here. Keep for notes and things. Okay. I'm going to spray it on here now, and then when I spray it on you, you spray it on. Do we have to stand back? No, no. Okay. Okay, see something? Something okay, up yeah, there. It's coming something happening. Yeah. All right, put the paper up there. Okay. See, it should come out. Hey, hey whoa. <laughs> what do you know about that? Hey. And uh, you call <laughs> that spray glue, hey, huh? See, look at it. Oops. Oh, gosh, it's, it, all it's all over the place. But at least it works. Yeah, it works. Well, that's, that. yeah. that's really great. For, that's, yeah. that's almost like the stuff that I use. You know, what the, stuff do you use? What do you think? Oh, well, uh, I mean, not to, you know, that that's nice. I mean, Hey, that's good. In fact, see, every once in a while when I need a, you know, a piece of paper to glue, stick on there, I just take and, you know, use this thing here. It's already compressed. And you give it a little whiff like that, and, yeah. and it, you know, it sticks. What's that? Let me see that. That's, that's a glue. I've never seen that before. Oh, well, uh, you could uh, keep that maybe for some of your other work. You might take yeah, that with you. Spray adhesive. Spray uh -huh. adhesive. Well, yeah. I didn't know that. I don't oh. need this. Oh, wow. Well, Professor, oh, okay. thanks, thanks for working that? on that anyway. Oh, we, yeah. <laughs> we appreciate that. And it's time now to meet our next two contestants. So come on right up here, contestants. Remember, the score is 20 to nothing right now. The blue team does have the lead. We'll see how long that will last as Deputy Les gets ready to bring in the next game here. All right, let's meet our next contestant for the blue team. What is your name? My name's Derek Robinson. I'm in fifth grade and I'm 10 years old. Good, and uh, how do you like school? It's pretty good. What's your favorite subject? Science. Uh-huh. Do you have any brothers and sisters at home? Do you? How many? Two brothers and two sisters. Well, family of five. Where do you fit in age-wise? Are you the youngest, the oldest, and the middle? 
middle. How, how young is the youngest child in your family? About 13 months. 13 months? My goodness, how, boy or girl? Um, boy. A boy, and what's his name? Kyle. Good. Why don't you just look into that camera and just wave and say, hi, Kyle. Hi, Kyle. There you go. Say, be good, Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good. And let's meet your opponent over here. What is your name? My name is Robbie. I am nine years old, and I am fourth grade. And how do you like school? Well, it's okay. <laughs> it's just okay, huh? What's the hardest subject in school? Um, I don't know. That you do them all pretty easy? Yeah. Good. Do you like sports? Yes. Which one do you like best? Baseball. What do you like to do in your spare time then? Play baseball? Yeah. And what else? Basketball. You like to swim? Nah. Or ski? No. No? Mm -mm. And what else do you do in your spare time then? Mostly, mostly sports, huh? Yeah. All right, good. What's your favorite thing to eat? Steak. <laughs> oh, boy. Expensive little guy here, I'll tell you. All right, we're ready for our next contest. Step right up here, boys. And Deputy Les, bring it right in here. And let's tell them what they've got to do. All right. This is called what? Me and my dad? Yes, sir. They're going <laughs> to move their, their fathers, match them up with their sons on the, on okay, the left side. Okay, there are move the fathers, fathers around. and sons that need to be matched up, okay? So we want you to see how quickly you can match up father and son, how many you can get right in just a little more than a minute's time, and it'll be worth 20 points. On your mark, get set, go! And you can help them out here. Holler and help them. They, you can yell. That's it. Give them some...
I bet that got his attention. It certainly did. Oh, what did you say, Marty? Well, we got to talking, you know, about things, and I said, Mr. Winslow, do you know that Jesus loves you? And what did he say? He said, well, you know, he kind of stuttered around a little. He said, Marty, we're all God's children, you know. Well, I've heard a lot of people say that, Marty, but you know, really, the only people who can say they're God's children are those people that have accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior. Well, anyway, what did you say then? I said, Mr. Winslow, did you know that Jesus died on the cross to save you from your sins? And all you have to do is invite him to come into your life and he'll forgive you and you can become a part of God's family. Well, what did he say to that, Marty? Well, we got to talking, you know, and he didn't invite Jesus to come into his heart, but he, he did say he might come to church. Well, that's good, Marty. You know, you see Mr. Winslow quite frequently, so you'll have a chance to talk to him again. Don't worry about that. And I wish you the best with your new adoption agency, okay? Sure thing. Everybody. Hey, everybody. I said, everybody. Look over here. Now that I got your attention, Mrs. Peterson wants to show us something she's making. I sure do, Professor. I have a fun recipe with peanut butter oh, and celery. Good, that looks good. And even raisins. You know, our body is the temple of the Lord, and we should take very good care of it. Right. And so right. when we want a snack after school, uh -huh. we should try something that tastes good. Right. And is healthy for us, too. This is a special recipe because Sher Sarah shared it with me. And it's called Ants on a Log. Ants on a Log. Boy, that is See? neat. Look at that. The raisins Peanut look like ants. And celery with raisins all laid on top. Sure is. Right. You know, and I like apples, but they kind of get boring after a while. Right. So. This is very nutritious, too, isn't sure it? Sure is. Right. Peanut butter has protein in yeah, it. We don't need all that junk food and stuff. We need nutritious food in our bodies, right? So I add peanut butter to my apple. Would you like right. to try one? Yes, thank you. Oh, that looks good. Professor Clodhopper always seems to find his way around good food, doesn't he? Isn't that the truth? Isn't that <laughs> That's the truth? That's good stuff to eat, though. <laughs> well, hello, Pastor Wilson. Just happy on. Pastor Wilson. How, How are you doing? doing? What are you drawing here? Well, we're, we're, we're doing a little thing on Moses here. Everybody knows the story of Moses, right? You remember when uh, the, the mother of Moses was very frightened about losing her son? Because the Jews were, were to be uh, slaughtered by the Egyptians. Yeah. So she sends the little daughter, the other daughter, Miriam, down to the river with the basket, with the baby inside the basket. And, you know, that was a brave thing the mother did. I remember it well. It sure was. Because she, she risked her own life to save the life of the son. You know, sometimes we think when people give children up for adoption, you know, that maybe... Uh, you know, they're giving their kids away or, you know, all kind of weird things. But this is a, we're talking about a brave situation here, you know. God looks at us that way too, you know. We're adopted, we're adopted sons, you know. In fact, God says when we don't have a, a father, he said he'll be our own father, you know. Yeah. In fact, I like that song that Sada was talking about. We're going to be in that kingdom with the king. Uh -huh. Who's the king? Yeah. You know, you know, Jesus is the king. And if we're sons, you know what that makes you, Sheriff Don? A prince. And it makes that little girl there a princess. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. right. We're all sons and daughters of God when we give him our life and accept Christ as our Savior. Just like little Moses was saved. by putting, He was put in, somebody might not know that story, but when all the little babies were supposed to have been put to death, Miriam and her mother, they made a, a little... Uh, little boat really it was yeah. a little yeah. cradle it was, but it was like a boat woven basket, and it was yeah. a woven basket out of reeds and things and they put some kind of tar probably on it so it wouldn't leak water and set that little baby out amongst the bulrushes in the water and it was hidden so that his life wasn't lost but then the king's daughter pharaoh's daughter came and found that little baby i wonder if he started crying I often wanted that maybe he started crying or something and at the right time at the right time got it ahead of time yeah. and pharaoh's daughter saw him and uh, she saw him and fell in love with him. I believe God put that love in her heart. And she took him back home and raised him in the king's house. Yeah. That's what she did. Yeah. And that's the story of Moses. One Praise little boy God. that was adopted who became the greatest leader of the Israelites as they were taken out of captivity in Egypt. A great story. I like Thank that. you, Mr. Campione. Like that. That's a beautiful drawing, too. Thank you. But right now, it's okay. time for our Bible Pumper, the last contest of today's program. 
Are you ready, Dawn and Tara? We're going to see how well you do. Each correct answer you give me is worth 10 points. Right now, the blue team has 40 points. The red team doesn't have any yet, but each correct answer you give me now is worth 10 points. Romans 8.14 says, For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. Is the book of Romans in the Old or New Testament? Is the book, okay, red side? New Testament. New Testament, you are right, and there's 10 points for the red side. All right, it is 40 to 10 now. Next question. Who can be adopted into God's family? Blue side? Anyone. Anyone, yes, you're right. John 1, 12 says, but to all who receive him, he gave the right to become children of God. That's absolutely right, and there's 10 more points for the blue team. Ephesians 1, 5 says, God had a plan from the beginning to adopt us into his family. What was that plan? What is God's plan to adopt us into his family? How did he fulfill that plan? Blue side? To um, send Christ into our world and then he died for our sins. You've so got it exactly right. It says in Ephesians 1, 5, his unchanging plan has always been to adopt us into his own family by sending Jesus Christ to die for us. You got it exactly right, blue side. That was a tough question. All right, 10 more points for the blue side. When we are adopted into God's family, what does God become to us? Red side? Our Father. Absolutely, our Father. Romans 8:15 says, part of the verse says, God's very own children calling him Father. We are God's very own children, and we call him Father. Next question. Can we be adopted into God's family? Right side? Yes. Absolutely. Galatians 4, 5 says, so that God could adopt us as his very own son. The score is now 60 to 30. Blue side, you're still ahead. Mr. Papillon just told us a little story, if you were listening, and I hope you were, about a baby that was adopted by Pharaoh's daughter. Can you name the baby? Red side? Moses. Yes, you are right. That was an easy one. It was Moses. Our score is 60 to 40 now. You're doing good, Red. Catching up. I want you to fill in the blank. If you think about it, you'll be able to do it. 2 Corinthians 6.18 says, I will be a blank to you, and you will be my sons and daughters. Red side? Father. Father. Yes, you are exactly right. <laughs> I will be a father to you, and you will be my sons and daughters. That's what God's Word tells us. I want you to fill... <laughs> oh, you're fast, red blue side, I'll tell you. I want you to fill in this blank. Except a man be blank, blank, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Two blanks to fill in. Except a man be blank, blank, he cannot see the kingdom of God. All right, those words, a red side? Born of? No, almost. You've got half of it, but I can't give you any points. It's born again. Except a man be born again. He cannot see the kingdom of God. All right, our last question, unless we have a tie. How can we be born again and become a child of God? Blue side? Um, to um, listen to his word and be good to him and serve him and pray. Okay, that, then can you give me just a little bit more? Um, we should listen and God loves us and we love him. Okay, but we must really accept him, repent, and turn from our sins too. But we'll give you points for that because I think you're already ahead anyway. Just by 10 points, I think the blue side was. Now at 70 to 50. Let's hear it for the blue team. They are the winners. All right. Very good. So the blue team will win those nice Sheriff awards. Don. And Sheriff Don. Pastor Wilson. I've yes, got a sir. question for you. you got a question for me? Yeah. What, uh, do, what do boys and girls mail away to Joy Junction for? Oh, they write to join the club, the mailbox the mailbox club. club. That's right. right. It's a great way for the kids to learn God's Word a little more. They've got uh, wonderful Bible stories in here, questions and answers. I'm telling you, yes, you can learn the story of God through uh, the salvation which God offers us through, salva uh, through Jesus Christ. Right. And all that we've been talking about, how to be adopted into the family of God, how to is in that story. That's your, or right. in all our lessons of the mailbox club. And all you have to do is write right here the address on your screen, write to Joy Junction, P.O. Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 34618. Join the Mailbox Club. We'll send you a lesson. You'll fill out all the answers, mail it back to us. We'll grade it, send it back to you at the next lesson. Then pretty soon we'll give you one of these beautiful certificates after you finish a series of lessons that will you can hang up in your room, 
and uh, remind you that you've done a real good job in studying the Word of God in the mailbox club. And it's free, so join. Just send us your age and your address and your name, and we'll send this to you right away, okay? And Deputy Les, what are you frantically <laughs> waving to me about? Or, oh, forgot about the pad. Oh, right there. oh send that to him too. You're, you're right. Thank you very much. And all those who join the mailbox club will be sent this free, neat pad. A lot of pages in it, and it reminds you to put God first. first. And that's what we talk about on every program. Proverbs 3, 6, in everything you do, put God first. So you can hold that. Pastor, and thank you for reminding me about the Mailbox Club, because it's important to join and learn God's Word. If you haven't been born into God's family, you know you're not adopted by God. For the Bible tells us that we have all been born in sin, and that we are of our father the devil. But if we will just come to Christ and say, Lord, I'm sorry for my sin, I repent, I turn from my sin, and I want you to come into my heart and forgive me. And if we have faith and believe, Jesus will come into our heart and forgive us, and we will be adopted into God's family. All have sinned, the Bible tells us, and come short of the glory of God. And we are separated from God until that time we come to Him and say, Lord, forgive me and come into my heart. And then we become a child of God. We become adopted into God's family, and then He becomes our Father. Will you do that? And write to us and let us know, and we'll be praying for you. Always remember that PGF reminds us to what? Put God first, kids, and we'll see you next week.